Chapter 28, The Invasion of Alturaz, 3. Summoning America by Diodoritos MD. Author's Note. Visit my Discord server for updates, announcements, and discussion for my stories. We get hundreds of messages per day, if not thousands. Link is also available on my profile page https colon double forward slash discord dot gg forward slash ymbtb northwest. Unfortunately due to work and university, I cannot continue to release chapters as I have had before. I will attempt to maintain weekly chapter releases, one new chapter every Monday. Writing so many new chapters per week is difficult to integrate into my schedule, so I will only be releasing one extra chapter per $50 donated. This will take effect starting September 1, 2021. Thank you all for understanding. If you're unhappy with the changes, feel free to adjust your patronage amounts to something more reasonable, I don't wish to overcharge anyone. If you've already sent a payment for the month of August, feel free to adjust your patronage status. https colon double forward slash patayon dot com forward slash diaduritos md. Due to technical difficulties and other priorities, I will only be releasing one chapter of Summoning America this week. The next chapter of Manifest Fantasy will be pushed back by one week. The total number of essay chapters for the month of August will not change, I will have a double upload next week rather than this week. Panurist Squadron, 15 miles southwest of Labriers. Wind rushed through Knight Captain Shalsa's helmet as his steed darted through the skies at full speed. As one of the Papaldian Empire's best combatants, he was one of the select few who could handle the incredible speeds that Wyvern lords were capable of. Boasting attributes greater than those of standard Wyverns, these beasts exhibited such advantages that Wyverns couldn't hope to beat them, one on one. The Alterans realized this and thinned the Papaldian aerial forces, hoping to even the playing field. Eighty Wyvern lords faced off against a force three times their size. Sir, we've lost track of two groups of Wyverns, amounting to eighty contacts each, one of his subordinates reported. Shalsas looked up into the dense layer of clouds above. Likely attempting the exact same strategy that our own units are. Have Vantora's squadron take position above us. Defensive formation overseer 1. Your orders have been transmitted, Knight Captain. Good, he said as he adjusted his helmet's manicon. I truly don't want to make it seem as if we're saving the glory of battle for ourselves, but this is a precaution we must take. Knight Captain Gandus won't be happy with having to take the initial strikes. His unit will receive significant casualties. Such is the nature of war, Shalsa said, eyeing the Alteran ships with bloodthirsty eyes. Such shame that war is in our nature. Alteran Royal Navy. Bordo watched as Ballisti were angled upward as the Papaldian Wyvern lords approached. Trying to hit even a standard Wyvern with such a weapon was unthinkable. However, new advancements in magical technology, ushered in by American assistance, gave birth to new tactics. Since the new bolts were equipped with magical fuses, an accurately timed volley could devastate the tightly grouped wyvern lords above. Although the ballista operators were adequately trained by the wealthy Alterans, they lacked technology to help with their aim. Without any fire control systems, they had to rely on their personal skill and wit. They carefully adjusted the angles of the ballista to compensate for the movement of the wyvern lords above, who were yet to take any evasive action. Slowly and with bated breath, they prepared to fire. Fire! Admiral Bordeaux commanded. The air snapped as dozens of bolts were unleashed into the sky, most of them converging onto the wyvern lords. A few seconds passed, then the tactic's viability was demonstrated. Deadly fireworks erupted below the wyvern lords, like a shotgun blast. Shrapnel tore through the tightly packed force, impacting them with numbers that could be compared to raindrops during a heavy storm. Admiral Bordeaux and his men watched wide-eyed as over half of the enemy wyvern lords fell out of the sky and into the ocean. From the initial force of twenty, twelve were eliminated and the rest suffered injuries of varying degree. After a short bout of shock and elation from the unexpected success, 
Bordeaux directed his men back to work. Ready the next volley. Panurist squadron. Chalcers watched the Alteran formation closely, feeling like something was off. He realized that the fleet had no wyverns guarding it, which was peculiar. As he was deep in thought, desperately trying to analyze their confusing tactics, balls of fire erupted below his squadron's formation. The deafening blasts were followed by the screams of dying wyvern lords and their knights. A few unlucky men happened to emerge unscathed, but were thrown off their mounts and fell. What the fuck just happened? Chalcer sent his mount upward, conducting erratic movements as the rest of his squadron followed suit. Sir, a subordinate responded. Their ships launched anti-air magic bolts. Shulwa was shocked. From their ballisti? He turned around, incredulousness visible even with his helmet on. Yes, sir. I'm sure of it. Their bolts exploded just before they reached us. Shalsa's sighed. So it seems that the Alterans have developed some new tricks. Relay this information back to the fleet. As far as, we shall coordinate with Vantura's squadron and strike at the Alteran ships. Spread out and attack from a vertical angle. But sir, what about the ambushing wyverns? We will have to hope our allies deal with them swiftly. At Shalsa's command, Vantura's squadron swooped down from the Sea of Clouds, joining the survivors of Panurus' squadron in their assault. The wyvern lords distanced themselves from each other, taking the necessary precautions against the explosive Alteran weaponry. Once they were in position almost directly above the Alteran fleet, the order to attack was given. Over thirty wyvern lords dove simultaneously, accelerating to immense speeds while preparing their fireballs. With his unparalleled, hawk-like vision, Chalcers observed the men moving along the decks of the Alteran ships. They hastily worked on their ballistae before slowing down several seconds later. Their movements became more methodical and calculating. Chalcers waited three seconds, assuming that the speed of their calculations was akin to those of cannon operators. His assumption was correct. As expected, several glints flashed across the Alteran ships, signifying the release of their volley. He broke off from his dive and continued straight, hoping to find a new angle for Reentry. As he pulled his steed up and to the left to avoid incoming fire, he warned his squadmates. Evade! Evade! The more skilled wyvern knights within their ranks reacted almost immediately. Before even completing the word evade, many of the knights initiated evasive maneuvers. Others, however, were not so adept with awareness. Those who reacted too slowly, along with some who commanded injured wyvern lords, were shredded by the rainstorm of metal fragments. Sparing no more than a second to grieve for their fallen comrades, the remaining Parpaldian knights regrouped to continue their attack. Chalcers sensed blood in the water as he noticed that some of the Alterans were beginning to abandon their posts and instead pick up bows. Looks like they don't have enough time to reload another volley. He deduced. Boldly, he led the charge, gaining speed as he neared the effective range of his wyvern lord's fireball. Sharp cracks emanated throughout the small cove as thirty fireballs found their targets, impacting the hulls of the wooden vessels and lighting them ablaze. Just seconds after the Papaldian forces completed their attack run, several secondary explosions rang out aboard some of the damaged Alteran vessels. A few lucky fireballs managed to hit supply caches of bolts and magic gems, which promptly exploded and caused a chain reaction. Five Alteran ships detonated with incredible explosive power that put the Papaldians' capabilities to shame. Entire ships were reduced to ash by their fragile magical cargoes while others were rendered inoperable by flying debris. While his men circled around for another strike, a transmission from General Sias came through. The other two squadrons had finally discovered the two respective groups of Alteran wyverns that had split up earlier. Already, casualties were mounting due to the sheer numerical advantage exercised by the Alterans. However, the report did not account for the missing 80 wyverns that they anticipated were defending the enemy fleet. Where had they gone? Chalcer's gut churned as he realized the Alteran's strategy, 
They hid their wyverns while their ships launched an attack on his forces in order to prevent friendly fire. Now that the Parpaldians were within melee range and injured, they were vulnerable to being surrounded and completely wiped out. Shalsas instinctively looked up, catching a glimpse of wyverns pouring down, angling themselves to intercept. Break off and engage the enemy flyers. Take this fight to the clouds, so we can take advantage of our wyvern lords and outmaneuver them. They ascended to meet the enemy, both sides charging at each other with unwavering tenacity. The wyvern lords, bred for power, outranged the Alteran wyverns and fired first. Nearly a fourth of the Alteran force was wiped out by the accurate Parpaldian volleys. The survivors did not falter, they maintained course and relentlessly pursued their superior Parpaldian counterparts. With three wyverns assigned to each wyvern lord, the lesser skilled Parpaldian riders had great difficulty shaking off their pursuers. Volley after volley chased after the Parpaldians. Although the Alterans were disadvantaged in terms of quality, the sheer amount of firepower brought down upon the Parpaldians resulted in nearly a dozen direct hits. Knight Captain Gandis has been hit. Someone from Vantora's squadron called out. Shalsas glanced over his shoulder and saw a wyvern lord tumbling out of the sky, spiraling down as it desperately attempted to maintain altitude. Knight Captain Gandis seemed to be alive, moving in an attempt to save himself. Damn it, Shalsas grumbled. It wasn't long before the Wyvern Lords were able to outpace the Alterans, beating them to the clouds. Now obscured by the fog of war, Shalsas ordered his men to engage the core of the Alteran formation, hoping to disrupt their chain of command and send them into chaos. The chasing Alterans were caught off guard by the sudden counterattack from the Parpaldians, who exacted twofold revenge for the dozen fallen Wyvern Lords. Shalsas led his men back into the clouds where they found themselves in a brutal melee with the valiant defenders. Despite the massive casualties his unit suffered, he couldn't help but feel impressed by the ingenuity and determination of the Alterans. He even felt respect for them, something that could have prevented the gross underestimation of their capabilities. Shalsas, behind. Shalsas turned his mount to the left, narrowly avoiding a fireball. Close call, he said ignoring the scorching heat from the passing projectile. The wyvern that had shot at him was subsequently taken down by one of his comrades. Undeterred by his short embrace with death, Shalsas dove back into combat. The frenzied battle lasted for nearly half an hour, with reports of similar situations from the other squadrons filtering in. Blooded, but victorious, the survivors of the Papaldian wyvern lord squadrons returned to their carriers. Shalsas counted the number of returning wyvern lords with a grim expression. From an initial force of 80, the four squadrons returned with massive casualties averaging 50% losses. Such a devastating loss was heretofore unheard of, and if the other carriers hadn't been lost, the casualties likely would have been in the low single digits. Having had enough of these thoughts, he turned around, accepting the well-earned rest that General Sias bestowed upon the returning wyvern knights. Alteran Royal Navy. They've broken off their attack run to engage our wyverns. Bordeaux muttered as he watched the two approaching forces. They clashed, sending fireballs into sporadic directions. All vessels, this is our chance to take on the Parpaldian fleet. Advance toward the enemy in standard line formation, keep your distance and have emergency systems in place. We don't want any more collateral damage from the explosives. Forty Alteran ships of the line surged forward, sails unfurled and oars deployed as they charged to meet the enemy in glorious battle. Unlike the matchup between their aerial units, the Alteran navy found themselves hopelessly outmatched. Not only were the Parpaldian warships more numerous, they were also of far higher quality, boasting cannons with double the range and armor with double the effectiveness. The Parpaldian fleet even fielded a few mano wars immense ships of the line with over a hundred cannons. If he had seen this match-up a week ago, he would have predicted complete annihilation for the Alteran fleet. However, seeing the new Ballisti in action gave him confidence, not for a victory, but confidence that the Alteran navy could actually pose a threat to the once-invincible Parpaldians. 
As fireballs detonated overhead, the two fleets converged. Two lines stared each other down until one side got close enough to fire. Admiral Bordeaux immediately gave the order to stop and present broadsides once his fleet reached effective range. The Papaldian ships continued forth undeterred and without conducting any evasive maneuvers, thus presenting themselves as easy targets. Bordeaux smirked, his eyes glinting with vengeance as he yelled at the top of his lungs, Fire! Papaldian Imperial Army. General Sias raised an eyebrow at the Alteran's strange movements. Why are they presenting broadsides? He asked aloud. They can't possibly have cannons with that much range, an officer said. Could they? Sias rubbed his chin. With the sheer amount of magic gems they have at their disposal, it wouldn't surprise me if they wasted large amounts of them on brute force weaponry. I've heard that they produce grossly expensive weapons such as bolts of the wind god. Perhaps we've underestimated the range of their bolts. Should we react? Maintain course, commander. Our anti-magic plating should suffice. The commander nodded and relayed Sias' order. The Parpaldians arrogantly followed his wall, thinking that Alterans posed little threat. Their arrogance soon proved to be their downfall as the bolts rained down upon Parpaldian ships, embedding themselves onto their hulls. HMPH, Sias crossed his arms. Their bolts couldn't even penetrate, his words were cut off by the sound of dozens of simultaneous detonations across his fleet. Sias raised his arms up, shielding his eyes from the luminosity of the explosions. He staggered backward as the ship rocked from the force of the bolt, catching himself on a wall. What the hell? Sir? We're now in range, an officer called out. Sias' shock quickly wore off replaced with anger and frustration. A quick glance to his sides confirmed his fears, the explosions had already resulted in the sinking of several ships. The bolts must have managed to ignite their ammunition stores. Wasting little time in retaliation, he instantly responded, wipe them out. Those damned Alterans, who the hell do they think they are? An enormous wall of smoke suddenly appeared as thousands of cannons fired, letting loose like thunder during a tropical storm. Although not as accurate as the Alteran bolts, the cannonballs made up for this disadvantage with numbers. The area around the Alteran fleet was so saturated with firepower that it was improbable that a single ship could escape unscathed. Indeed, no ships were spared from Sire's wrath. Cannonballs tore through the line of Alteran ships, which quickly fell due to their lack of adequate armor. Like the unfortunate Parpaldian ships that had their ammunition stores set ablaze, many of the Alteran vessels went up in flames. They erupted spectacularly, bursting in shows of light as magic gems exploded within their ships. The beautiful carnage annihilated a majority of their fleet, leaving only six ships of the line still floating. Miraculously, these ships were spared from the devastating explosions that their comrades had succumbed to. Taking in water, these survivors decided to charge the Parpaldians. Quickly, Sire said, realizing what they were planning on doing. Destroy them. Don't let them get close. He then turned around, silencing his manacon. Captain, begin pulling our vessel back. The captain of Sire's flagship nodded. Meanwhile, Sire walked forward, wishing to see the battle progress. The Alterans reloaded fairly quickly, firing another volley in an arc, which created somewhat of a smokescreen while showering nearby Parpaldian ships with metal shrapnel. Several Parpaldian ships fired in retaliation, but missed on account of poor visibility. Sire's heart began to race. Sweat dripped down his neck as he anxiously awaited the next volley from his fleet. To his relief, the next volley found success, sinking five enemy vessels. One surviving ship continued forth, boasting no new scars as if it alone had been blessed by the heavens. His eyes widened as he realized that his ships likely couldn't reload in time. Captain, hurry! Sire stuck down behind a communications station just as a tremendous blast engulfed a dozen Parpaldian ships from the front of his fleet's formation. Sire looked up from his cover as a column of smoke rose upward, 
a testament to the determination of the Alteran defenders. Those bastards, he clenched his fist. I will ensure that they suffer for this transgression.